Uh, I'm going to introduce myself and the startup buddy later on. But first, I want to welcome Her Excellency, the Ambassador of the Netherlands here in Singapore, and her name is Kwan. Thanks, Robin. It's great to be here with Startup Body, one of the local organizations that is helping startups. My name is Marguerite van Ho. I'm the ambassador of the Kingdom of the Netherlands to Singapore and Brunei. Kingdom is important to say because, as many of you know, my queen was here last, uh, she left last night, she was here yesterday to give a keynote to the FinTech and she also had a short meetup with some of the startups here and she was as impressed as I, I am with the quality of the startups here. I see a lot of friends from the Singaporean ecosystem of startup, a lot of Dutch friends and I think we both rock. It's really not the big countries that have uh, the big solutions, it's the small countries that have the smart solutions and that's the future. And I'm really very sorry that I can only be here to share with you the opening because I would love to see the pictures of the investors because normally I see investors very relaxed, sitting, laid back, you pitch for me. <laughs> uh, I've never seen them pitching, I don't know whether they've even tried. I do my pitches not so much in the elevator, although I sometimes practice in the elevator. Um, my pitches are very often when I want to sort of get an idea to my minister and he doesn't have time at all so I walk with him from the restrooms to the elevator and have 10 seconds so that's the really short pitches and sometimes you meet up people and you try to have the first impression. Well, uh, I'm sure that I'll get a lot of feedback from everybody here. Uh, and I'm sure that tables turned will get some new perspectives. Um, well, I see there is a, a team of members of the jury who are very qualified and very honest, so I think you'll get some uh, real results out of them. And that's all I have to share with you. Um, I've been running on my high heels at the FinTech. I don't know, did you lose a lot of weight at FinTech? I did, because it's so large that you <laughs> are walking a lot. And now I really like it that we have this special events like this one, where we really get together into the next level. So Robin uh, and my colleagues at the Embassy and at the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Economic Affairs and the Startup Buddies here, thanks for organizing this. And enjoy your afternoon. Make a lot of noise. Um, thank you very much, Ambassador Bono. Um, like she already uh, explained, she has had a very busy week. Our Minister of Internal Affairs for the Netherlands was here at the start of the week. On Wednesday, our Queen, um, Queen Maxima was here. Uh, she told me that uh, when the Queen was here, she had to get up at 4 o'clock here in the, in the morning to, to guide her through Singapore the whole day. So we were really happy that she had a small slot in her schedule to come here to Table Stearns and open it for us. Um, back to the event now. Um, my name is Robin Turnings. I'm the founder CEO of the Startup Buddy. The Startup Buddy is an online innovation and an acceleration platform based out of Singapore for founders, entrepreneurs, innovators, and enterprises. Um, basically, think of it, in, of it as a startup bootcamp online. I came to Singapore about four years ago, and that's when I started to become an entrepreneur. Um, I started the company here first together with Danny, that I don't know who's there in the back, uh, and Irvin, uh, which was about online financial planning. We worked on it for about a year and a half, and then we had a nice platform, we had users, but we didn't make any money, which is kind of a big problem for a startup. Um, so we decided to move on from that, but we also started wondering what did go wrong. Between the three of us, we had about 30 years of corporate experience, we had three degrees from good universities in the Netherlands and Singapore, and still we weren't able to pull it off. So then we figured, if we have that issue, virtually every other entrepreneur is running into the same problem. And then we started wondering, how could that be solved? So we figured, becoming an entrepreneur has to become simpler. And that's how we started the Startup Body. 
Um, so we set out to, set a, to build a startup body for all entrepreneurs as an open platform to get from ideation to first round of funding. How do we do that? We do everything online, except this event today. Um, when you go to the startup body, we provide you with toolkits, we have an online mentoring platform, we have an academy where you learn all the basic skills of building your business. How to do marketing, how to validate your product, how to develop a product, how to put together a team, etc. Et we basically hand hold you anywhere, anytime um, in your startup journey. By now over 1,000 entrepreneurs are doing that. That's probably making us one of the biggest accelerators in the world already. We currently have users in 40 different countries and we're grow growing quite rapidly at the moment. The program you can do anywhere you like. So compared to other programs, you don't have to apply first, go into a batch for three months or six months. You decide how you build your business, if you do it next to your, next to your regular job and when you think you're ready to go full force, you, you quit your job, start, uh, start your own business, and start fundraising. A daunting second step for a lot of founders and entrepreneurs in building their business is raising funding. Because it's usually something that you also haven't done before. That's also how we came up with the ta Tables Turned event, which I'll explain a little bit better. But when you work on the startup body as a founder or entrepreneur in creating your business, Automatically, you're also creating your pitch deck for investors. But instead of doing a snapshot, which you can share with investors, you make a time series for that. That's more reliable for investors because they can see how you learned over time to improve. It's also better for you because you actually know exactly where you're at and where you came from. In the almost two years uh, since we launched, we have created a network of around 400 investors here around the region. And as of this week, all founders and entrepreneurs are able to connect to, the, to those founders and ent entrepreneurs. So this week we went in beta with our uh, investor portal, which means that all the investors that we know in Southeast Asia are gonna, uh, are, you're able to, be, uh, to connect to through the platform. You basically just toggle when you want to share your profile to them and you want to start fundraising. So that brings me to today. As all of you know, fundraising can be hard when you start out. Um, a lot of people ask me all the time, like, how do I approach an investor? How should I do my pitch? Uh, who is a good investor, etc., etc. There's a lot of different answers to that, but the first, the first step to take is to figure out who you're actually talking to. And that's how we came up with the Devil's Turn event. The purpose of today, other than for the investors to win these really cool prizes, um, is to for you as founders and entrepreneurs to understand better how investors look at your business. So hopefully during the pitches, I haven't heard them before, but they are going to share with you what the things are that they look out for, uh, what's important to them, what their focus is, what their personal interest is, etc. And you can use this as an entrepreneur or founder later on during the speed dating or in the future to have a better match with your investors investor and a better talk with them. Go. So the program today is split up in two pieces. Um, as of three o'clock, it's now quarter past two, so as of three o'clock in the room behind you there will be speed dating sessions. All of you uh, who have a... Sorry? Uh, those are speed dating, if you haven't talked to me, can you come talk to me? Ah, okay. So, so the boss of this event is in the back. Her name is Meryl. Most of you have already met her by email. Uh, if you didn't, it's her. She has the same shirt as me. She's in charge of everything today. So if you get stuck anywhere, you have a question, you don't know where to go, you don't know who to talk to, uh, ask her please. So, um, I was at the speed dating session. So the speed dating session starts in the back at 3 o'clock. There will be different tables over there with Dutch and Singapore flags on it. The tables are numbered, uh, and every investor has their separate table. For the founders and entrepreneurs who sign up for the speed dating, basically look on your schedule if you have it. If you don't have your schedule yet, uh, there's going to be three ladies, which uh, one of them is Salsville over there, uh, Bianca over there, <laughs> and and. Isabel, I don't see. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. 
uh, and he's well. They can tell you at any given moment where you should go, who you're supposed to talk to. So just ask them. The speed dating sessions will be 15 minutes. Um, we're not rescheduling anything because the program is pretty, pretty packed. Uh, the investors that are here today, like, I, like we emailed most people already, the schedule has been going up and down and, and turned around quite a few times. So this, as far as I'm aware, is the last list as of now. Uh, so these investors are going to be available to you today to speak that with and get connected to. I don't know what it could occur. Um, and this is the second group. <coughs> and for the main event, which is Tables Turned. Um, Tables Turned is a pitching event for investors. Um, meaning that the investors will pitch exactly the same way as founders and entrepreneurs are used to when they have to pitch for fundraising or a big event here in Singapore, for example, like the Asia or Ashton. The concept is pretty simple. Um, every investor has five minutes to pitch. The judges here at the front have criteria what they're going to be judged on. <coughs> After the five minute pitch, there will be a three minute Q&A with the judges. And then we have about one or two minutes left to, to have the next investor uh, come on the stage. You as a crowd get to decide also who gets one of the awards. So we're going to award two investors for the prize. One is going to be the crowd award. At the end of all the pitches, we'll have uh, the opportunity to, to, to vote. Uh, the voting you can do based on your own criteria. The other award is going to be based on the judging criteria that the judges here have at the front. This is going to be the order, um, but I know that Grace, is Grace already in the room? Okay, so Grace will run in and out today, so we might have to reschedule whenever she like comes comes around. Then I already said we have really great judges. So the first one I want to introduce is Kathleen. Uh, Kathleen is here in front. Ah, uh, your picture is already. <laughs> um, Kathleen is a founder of a Startup Venture Capital, which is a new VC firm that's been set up here in Singapore. Um, she is also the founder of the Co-Founder Network, but most importantly, she's one of the winning investors of last year's Table Start. Um, so she knows how you're supposed to do it, um, and that's what she's going to be looking out for during the pitches. Then uh, we have Alex Manson from Standard Chartered Ventures. Uh, so Standard Chartered Ventures is um, the innovation department within Standard Chartered that does three, three important things within the bank. I don't know what's happening here. Um, can somebody help fix this? Oh, it's back. So, um, Standard Chartered Ventures, first of all, tries to bring an innovative culture within Standard Chartered globally. Teach the employees within Standard Chartered how to think from a more customer perspective, how to come up with new ideas to improve the bank, uh, how to come up with scalable financial solutions. Secondly, they collaborate a lot with uh, external, external companies, startups. We actually started uh, on a POC together with Standard Chartered Ventures this week. Uh, and we're going to try how that's going to work in their innovation program. Thirdly, they invest in companies. So everybody who's here from uh, Singapore might have heard of a company called SoCash, which basically allows you to get money in any small shop. Uh, that's partly an investment from Standard Chartered. Then we have Niels Beers. Um, Niels Beers is the director of TechLeap uh, from the Netherlands. Uh, TechLeap, um, other than the Dutch people, I don't think you have heard of it, but for all the people here from Singapore, you might have heard of SGMFA. TechLeap has a very similar mandate. So the, the purpose of TechLeap is to help grow and um, stimulate the startup ecosystem in the Netherlands and the collaboration of those startups in other countries. That's why we also have quite a lot of Dutch startups here joining us uh, today. Um, the ambition of Prince Constantine, I heard on the news, I don't know what's correct, I didn't check it, uh, but Prince Constantine is the ambassador for Techly. He said he wants to create two unicorns a year in the Netherlands uh, based on the efforts that Techly is performing. Is that realistic? Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Okay. <laughs> um, then fourth, uh, this is going to be a very different inter introduction. So Josh is over there. Um, I met Josh like two and a half years ago or something. 
And the first time I met him was during a pitching event for Texas, which is a big startup conference in Bangkok. I really liked them right from the start, but then we had to pitch. And I was the first one pitching, and after I was done pitching, I was pretty happy with myself. But then Josh, I think, came up third or fourth or something, and then I knew I was screwed. <laughs> because Josh is a really, really good pitcher. Uh, so he's got a company called Jumper AI, and basically every, every pitching contest that has been going on in that year, he, he won. Um, so he will look from the founder perspective at the investor pitchers. Finally, we have Ms. Mirai Wagner. So she is the deputy director of International Enterprise Department of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. I really had to read that out because... <laughs> basically, uh, basically, it's a department from the ministry that helps companies from the Netherlands uh, expand to other countries do international business. Is that correct? Uh, on top of that, she is also co-responsible for setting up the trade mission uh, here to Singapore Fintech Festival. So thank you very much all judges in advance already for your hard work in the next probably one and a half hour. Um, before we go to the first pitch, which is going to be Sam, um, are there any questions at this point? Everything is clear? Toilets are over there to the right. Don't put up your finger. Anything else? Okay, then I give the floor to the first pitch, Sam Gip from Endeavor Ventures. Thanks guys, I'm super excited to be here today. Uh, as Rob mentioned, I'm Sam Gibb at Endeavor Ventures, which I guess forward. Oh yeah, there we go. So Endeavor Ventures is a sector agnostic seed stage VC. So invest in basically any sectors except for med tech, biotech. Those are two things that I don't <coughs> generally touch. The things that I focus on and, and pay particular attention to are FinTech, Big Data AI, and also crypto, but don't get it twisted. I don't mess around with tokens, but invest into equity for companies that are creating infrastructure and can actually get paid in real dollars there. Now, you might be thinking, what do these two handsome gentlemen have in common? But it's, it's also the reason that typically companies will come to me for either guidance or investment. That reason being, we don't talk turkey. Now, there was actually a really great video of a couple guys talking turkey that I could have clicked on with this turkey that popped up there, but we've had some fidelity issues, so we've lost that. But the fact of the matter is, I don't, I don't, I don't mess around. And as a result of that, I've actually had some of the better founders come, out, come to me and seek me out. Initially, when someone had called me the Simon Cowell of Southeast Asian startups, I was offended. I mean, why wouldn't I be? I mean, look at the guy. I, I thought he was a bit of a, for lack of a better word, asshole. But the fact is, he shoots people straight. And for the founders who want to grow and want to actually do better, they want honest answers. They don't want people to beat around the bush. As opposed to actually going into some of the companies that I have invested in, what I thought I'd do is talk about some of the companies that I've, I've well, some of them I've invested in and some of them I've just worked with too, to see what, what that say about me. So we're going to get humble, constructive, to the point, ooh, that's good. Super bright angel investor that cares and understands. Great insights. Someone you want to have on your team, one of the best. Who says this? Why do they say this? Because I care. And that's why I'm generally a good investor in someone that you want to have on my team. Thanks, any questions? Sure, so as I mentioned, it's more about being humble, being teachable, right? But then if we 
take this a little bit more broadly and the things that I'm generally looking at in the company. So I have a soft cap on the valuation that I look at. Generally, it's going to be companies under $10 million. Uh, it's going to be an idea, something that gels with me, so something I'm familiar with. This is also why I tend to focus on FinTech, because my background and more in each of those projects would be actually understand a lot about the financial system and can add quite a lot of value there. Uh, and then the, like, the third key fact for me is, yeah, the founders. Are they humble? Are they teachable? The only way that I can really gather that is by working with them for a while. So I will typically work with them for a couple of months before making an investment. Um, there's another two soft factors that I'll look at when, when I'm trying to assess a startup. So one of those is disruptive factor. Is this something that's new, something that's different, something that hasn't been done before? And then also my value add, can, can I actually help start? Because there's enough capital here. Uh, especially in the later stages, there's generally enough capital. And if you look at most markets in the early stage scene, there's enough capital. And that's why I wanted to show those testimonials, because they actually do care. It seems very friendly when you uh, welcome startups. How about when you reject them? Like, how do you reject a pitch? I always get an answer. I don't go out of the room. That's that's something I would say because, and and my take on this is generally that it's better to have some feedback than no feedback at all. So, if it's if it's if it's super critical feedback, like if, if it's very negative, I'll definitely do that on a phone call. Uh, and, and given the way that I manage my deal flow, a lot of the stuff is done on vocals, so right? Uh, if, if it's something more generic and I haven't actually had a meeting with them, and it, it's something more about the pitch, the idea, you know, we'll give it in writing, I'll give it a reason. I won't just give nothing. So, uh, yeah, try to be as distracting as possible. Uh, what do you look for in a team? What do you look for in the founding team? Okay, so yeah, humble, teachable, and also technical skills. Simply. Uh, usually, founders when they reach out to investors, right? Uh, they reach out for guidance, and when it's guidance, there's more of an investment. And do you just guide and then invest, or do you invest and then guide? So if you go back to the kind of the five key things that I'm looking for when I'm going to invest in a company, generally I'll look for the guidance, I'll look for the value if I make the investment because, and this is something I actually tell some of the startups that I work with to look forward to, I don't like other investors that go, oh yeah, yeah well, as soon as we do this, then we'll be able to add a heap of value to you. Well, if you can add a heap of value, why don't you start adding value from day dot? And, and like you can build on that relationship, so that's generally how I'd like to approach it. And some of the times, a lot, a lot of the times it's just like, because I'm sector agnostic and there's such a broad range that I cover, there are ideas that I might find appealing, but I just can't add the value, so I can't be interested. So I've got 10 seconds left. Can I take one more question, please? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was looking behind. Um, what, what is the investment you're most proud of and why? If you asked for the most challenging investment, then that would have actually been an easier question. Most proud of? Uh, probably actually a brewer, a microbrewer that I invested in here in Singapore, largely because the reason that I invested in them wasn't possible. They were going to be doing microbrewing on premise at places like this who want to be real for three years, my time's up. But I'm just going to finish this answer, don't worry, it's only going to take me five seconds. The thing is, you can't actually brew on premise here because the tax authorities don't like that, they can't collect any excise on it, so you have to. Brew and essentialized premise so they've heard it and it's really well. Thank you. <laughs>
Um, so I don't have any slides today, and there's two reasons for that. One is actually a very lousy reason uh, that there are three kind of industry conferences happening this week at the same time, so uh, I really did not have the time to prepare any slides. But then in hindsight, I came up with a much better reason, and that reason is that I also prefer it if entrepreneurs come into our office and they just tell their story instead of coming in and pulling up a pitch deck and just rattling through that thing and just, you know, like, uh, we like to see the pitch deck, we would like to see the pitch deck either beforehand or afterwards if we're, if we're interested. We are interested in hearing your story, right? Like, why are you doing what you're doing? Like, is there a connection between us? Uh, that's much more interesting to me than that actual pitch deck. So, reason uh, number two. So, with that, I would like to share kind of the story of, of Lunix Ventures and why we started this. Um, but in order to tell that story, I need to go back in time a little bit and maybe test that's the age of the audience. Um, who here had, in the past remembers a 14K4 modem? Or a 28K modem? Ah, yes, we had the early 35s here. Yeah, yeah welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so that was the very early days of the internet, right? I remember it very clearly. Um, uh, I was like super early, like building websites and doing stuff on, online. Um, and it was a prevailing narrative at, at the time as well, like the people who were there might, might remember is. Um, at the time, people were saying things about the internet, like, why do we need this? Like, I don't think we need this. Like, this is used for, uh, for drug trafficking and pornography and all these kind of vices, right? That's what people said at the time. Guess what? 25 years later, the mm -hmm. bank stocks, the largest stocks in the world, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google, they're all internet companies. They're all built natively on the internet, right? Nobody saw this coming 25 years ago. Um, so it's about like skating where the puck is going and not where it is at the moment. So um, you might have heard of another new technology these days where people say it's used for drug trafficking, it's used for illegal activities, terrorist financing, that's the, that's the one that often comes up. And obviously that's the one that a lot of people laugh about, but they laugh less so about these days, and that's the crypto industry, right? Um, we see this as the next big wave of innovation. Um, we have, for the first time in history, we've invented arguably the best money in terms of Bitcoin itself, which is an amazing uh, invention. And the fact that so many people are skeptical about it makes me even more confident that this is an enormous opportunity. And the entrepreneurs going into, the, into this space now, they have this 1000x opportunity, uh, the likes that Jeff Bezos had in the 90s, right, when he started Amazon. Nobody saw, like, why are you selling books online? Similar opportunities exist today. So what we invest in is early stage seed deals into crypto-related startups. Um, so we've done nine deals, um, two in the US, one in Korea, uh, and the rest in Singapore. And what we focus on is kind of the infrastructural companies building out this ecosystem. So what we're capable of doing with blockchain and crypto is basically we've generated completely new layers of trust where there was no trust before. Like you can now transfer value peer to peer just like you could transfer on Napster back in the 90s, right? When it was first music, now you can transfer assets, you can transfer money, you can do automated smart contract execution. We focus on the infrastructural layer. So what we invest in are the new infrastructure companies that are building out this new financial ecosystem. So what we've done, for example, is a custody solution, a crypto options exchange, an AML solution for crypto payments, um, a developer stack, an authentication management tool. Like these kind of uh, startups, they have a blue ocean in front of them. Uh, it's completely open, this field. 